Hello everybody. I am Dr. Shruti Gupta, Skill Associate Professor at Sri Vishwakarma Skill University. Today, in my three sessions, I am going to cover an overview of performance management, very important steps in performance planning, and the methods of performance appraisal. Hope you enjoy these sessions. Let's talk about the first module. Coming about the overview of performance management. Now, when we talk about performance management, it's a very competitive environment. Every stakeholder is in, interested to ensure that the results are being achieved. You know, everyone is contributing to the accomplishment of the result, right from the guard who comes to the employees who are working to the other staff which are there. They all are working to create a customer delight. So in a manner, the performance management has to be done to identify who has contributed what and to understand the contribution of the employees who are working in the organization towards the final goal. So the first session typically would be covering the following objectives. The first one we will talk in detail about what do we mean by performance management. Second, how do we distinguish between performance management and performance appraisal? The third one we will be talking about why should we go about with performance management? So what are the advantages of having a performance management system? And finally, uh, we are going to understand what is the process. You know, once we have understood that yes, performance management is required, then how do we go about that? So these are the four, four objectives which we would be covering during the session. Right? So all set, we talk about first the concept of performance management. Now like I gave in the initial opening remarks, every organization is interested in achieving their business objective. So when we talk about, two, there are two types of management. The management of performance of the organization as a whole and second, managing the performance of employees who in turn are contributing to the goal of the organization. So when we talk about performance management, what is it? Performance management is a tool. It's a tool which helps the employees understand their performance objectives, what are the critical dimensions on which they would be assessed and what are the competencies which are required. Let me tell you that whenever a new joinee joins the organization, there is a lot of anxiousness. They have questions. Tell me, what am I supposed to do? Tell me, how am I supposed to do? And tell me, how will you know whether I have done what I was supposed to do? So to answer such questions, you need a robust performance management system. So performance management would provide an opportunity to all the employees in the organization along with the managers to jointly create a plan, right? To achieve shared objectives, which in turn helps in the accomplishment of the organizational goals. So performance management is a very systematic process. It's a holistic process because it encompasses all the small nitty gritties with the intention to identify what are the critical dimensions of performance with an intention to carry out the activities which will ensure that the vision, mission, goals, objectives of the organizations are being met in the most efficient manner. So what do we draw? That performance management is a systematic process. It's a holistic approach to manage the performance and it is being done set jointly by the two parties are typically involved. First is the appraisee or the employee whose performance is being appraised and second is the manager also known as the appraiser who is evaluating or assessing the performance. So there might be a lot of definitions which may be talking about what is performance management. I take one definition which was being defined by Armstrong. Armstrong typically defines that performance management is a means of getting better results from the organization teams and individuals by understanding and managing the performance and the competencies requirement. He further adds, it is a process of establishing a shared understanding about what is to be achieved and an approach to managing and developing people in a manner that increases the probability that it will be achieved both in short term and long term. 
Now, let us further, you know, see what are the key, key things which Armstrong tries to mention in the definition. Now, he said that performance management is a continuous process, which was also further re-emphasized by Agunas, who also defined performance management being a continuous process of identifying, measuring and developing the performance of the individuals as well as the teams and aligning the performance with the strategic goals of the organization. So, these are certain key things to be involved. So, we need to understand that performance management, like said earlier, it is a holistic process, it is a continuous process, it is a joint process which aims to ascertain the requirements or the standards which are to be achieved and which is being set jointly by, between the appraisee and the appraiser with the intention to achieve the organization goals together, right. So, when we talk about performance management, you know, it is everybody's job. Employee has to own the process. The supervisor, who is also the appraiser, has to partner in the process. The human resource will support the process and the leader, the people at the top position are the champions who has to ensure that the process is well executed down below. So, performance management typically is not the domain of one person or one department, but it requires a collaboration. Now, let us talk. Now that we have a broad understanding of what is performance management, now many people tend to interchange performance management and performance appraisal. Now, we need to understand that appraisal, which is evaluating the performance, is a part of performance management. Performance management, like we discussed earlier, is a continuous process, which talks about not just appraising, not just evaluating, but also setting the standards and providing an environment for the continuous monitoring. So, to highlight what are the key differences between performance management and performance appraisal, let us take one by one. Performance management is a dynamic, a continuous process. Whereas, performance appraisal may be, it is an event, so it is a periodic. So, probably once you have, you know, done certain things, then you are going to evaluate. Say many organizations do it once in a year, some do, does it once in six months, some does it once a quarter. So, unlike performance management, which is a continuous process, performance appraisal is a periodic event. Second, the intention of performance management is to improve the organizational performance and the effectiveness by aligning the individual goals with the goals of the organization. When we talk about performance appraisal, now performance appraisal is a formal review, a review between the appraiser and the appraisee to understand what has been done, what has not been done. So, it is narrower. Third, when you talk about performance management, the intention of performance management is to link the goals of the individual with the goals of the organization. So, which means it is a strategic process, why? Right? Because it is linked with the long term objectives. Performance appraisal typically is when you are evaluating the performance, so it is one of the steps in the entire gamut of performance management. So, to highlight the fact that appraisal, performance appraisal and performance management cannot be used simultaneously or cannot be used interchangeably. Performance appraisal is just a small part of performance management. Okay. Now, let us talk about what are the goals of performance management. So, the goals of the performance management could be stated as follows. The first and the most important goal of performance management is communication between the supervisor and the employee, right? So, the employee needs to understand what are they being evaluated on and the supervisor too has to agree on that. So, to create clear channels of communication between the supervisor and the employee, performance management process is being established. The second goal is feedback on performance. How can we expect the employee to improve their performance if we do not tell them what are the areas on which they need to improve? 
So during the performance management process, there is also a performance review discussion wherein a feedback is being given by the manager or the supervisor to the employee. So the second goal is communication or feedback. The third one is documentation. It is important to keep documenting each and everything. What was identified initially jointly, then after certain period of time what has been done, then what are the improvements and then how do you design the developmental plan. So you also have to maintain certain documents. Now I am not saying that the documents always has to be in hard copy. Many of the organizations you know in an endeavor to save paper and having a very robust uh, backup system they maintain it in soft but it is important to keep a copy. Another goal of performance management is to work on the goals, the developmental goals. See now it has been assessed. This is what the employee worked on and the supervisor said that these are the areas which could be further developed. So the fourth goal is to work on the developmental goals, areas of improvement. And finally, the goal is to align with the strategic planning process. Ultimately, an employee should know how is his or her contribution helping in the achievement of the broader organizational goals, right? So these are the five performance goals that we talked about. From the goals comes to the purposes of performance management. When you, when you do such an activity which is very, uh, you know, transparent, it helps. So the intention of performance management is to identify what are the rewards to be given to the individuals, to also give feedback to the subordinate about the areas of improvement, to recognize people for their good performance, right? So if you keep, don't keep reinforcing the superior performers, their performance would also come, back, come down to an average and then below average. So it is important for the reinforcement. So that is what performance management would help not just the uh, superior performances, the weak performers also needs to be identified. So performance management also enables to identify those weak performers and put them into improvement plan so that gradually their performance could improve. Next is to take certain decisions. Now these are administrative decisions, who needs to be promoted, who needs to be demoted, what is the increment which you are supposed to get who needs to be transferred on the basis of performance. So another purpose of performance management is to take these administrative decisions. And yes, finally since the intention is not just to take administrative decisions but work on in future, so another broad purpose of performance management is build up future goal commitment that together that is how, this is how we will achieve or jointly achieve or move in the upward direction for the growth of the organization. So we typically talked about the main purposes of performance management. Now if such things are being done in a very robust systematic manner, needless to say that the organization performance is going to increase. So when we have a performance management system in place, it definitely has a huge impact on the performance of the organization. Everyone knows what is the shared vision because it is communicated at appropriate intervals during the performance management cycle. Everyone is clear about what is expected out of them. People are aware as to what constitutes a high performance and how we need to achieve it. It further helps to achieve the organization goals by enhancing the employee engagement, employee motivation, which in turn further increases the employee retention. And on the basis of that, an individual development plan is being made. So, to actually reinforce the various points, if performance management if it is done well, it is definitely going to have a huge impact on increasing the organization performance. So after we have understood the impact 
of performance management on the organizational performance, let's move to our next objective. The next objective was to understand now what is the process. We did, uh, we did come to know what is performance management. We did highlight the difference between appraisal and management. We did a discussion on what is the impact of performance management on the organization. Now that we know the importance, it's imperative for us to understand the process of performance management. Now, just like management is a process of plan, do, check, act. Typically, in the same manner, performance management too is a process which comprises of following steps. The first is prerequisites. See, before you implement anything, you need to ensure that there are certain things already in place, which we call it in terms of prerequisites. The second step in the process of management is performance planning. As the saying goes, if you don't know where you have to go, any road will lead you there. So planning ascertains which is the route one is supposed to take. The third is trying to talk about performance execution. That now is the time after you have jointly set the expectations, you give time to the employee to execute or to do the work. The fourth is trying to talk about performance assessment. Once the work has been done, it needs to be assessed. How well has it been done? The seventh is trying to talk about performance review, which is taking stock and communicating to the employee. And after you do a performance review, then you set up new expectations, higher expectations. So we call the sixth step as performance renewal and recontracting. Now these are the various steps involved in the process of management. Now that you have a broad understanding about the steps, let's go in detail about each of the step. The first step, prerequisites. Now when we talk about prerequisites, in fact, before we can begin with the performance management process, two important things must come. First, strategic planning must be completed. Now, because you cannot, com you cannot ascertain what a person has to do unless and until the organization knows their mission, vision, which in turn would be completed during the strategic planning process. So once the organization is clear about their vision and mission, goals, objectives, the second prerequisite is job analysis. Now job through job analysis, the organization gets to know about the various job positions and they get to know the task, duty, responsibilities which are covered in job description and the job specification which talks about knowledge, skills and attitudes which are required to do these jobs. So unless and until two pre prerequisites are there which are knowledge or understanding of the goals, vision, mission of the organization and second understanding of the job role which in turn gets cleared through job analysis. So once these two things are set then we start with the second phase in the process of performance management and that is to do with performance planning. In fact, performance planning is so important because if the performance you do not invest adequate time while planning the performance of an employee, you may not be able to, you will not be able to monitor it effectively or you may not be going in the right direction. So the organizations have to ensure that adequate time is invested right, in planning the performance of the employee. And as was told earlier, that because performance management is a joint process, the participation of both the employee and their manager is imperative to understand the critical things required in performing or what are those things 
on which a person has to perform. So it's typically a meeting wherein the employee and the manager jointly set the expectations that this is what the employee is supposed to perform on. When we talk about jointly setting the expectations, again it is important to highlight the fact that the expectations or what we call it in terms of the goals or the objectives, it needs to be SMART. SMART will be further discussed in detail in my second module, which is an acronym which talks about specific, measurable, attainable, realistic and timely standards. So performance planning is an important step which sets the expectations, which I would say sets the ball rolling. Now once an employee is clear, a praise is clear, what they have to do, how they have to do, now comes the third step, right? So the third step typically is now talking about execution. Now is the time since you have clarified all the doubts, concerns and jointly the employee and the manager have agreed to certain objectives. Now you give time to the employee to execute that work. Now I would say that the, this third step which is performance execution, there is a joint responsibility between the manager and the employee. Now you would wonder how joint because it is the employee who is supposed to work. Yes, the employee responsibility is to give full commitment to the goals which were established in the previous phase of performance planning. Also, one of the key responsibility of the employee is to continuously communicate and update the manager on the extent to which the goals objectives have been accomplished or I would say also what are the barriers or the challenges which an employee is facing in the process of achieving the goals. So it is the responsibility of the employee to keep communicating and sharing the progress with the manager. So having said this to be the responsibility of an employee, now let us see what is the responsibility of the manager. A manager cannot shirk his or her shoulders and say that now, you know, the planning has been done and now it is completely up to my superior, uh, uh, sorry, subordinate to manage the performance or up to the employee. It is the responsibility of the manager to continuously provide the feedback, coach and also give a reinforcement if things are going the way they are, positive reinforcement to the employee. So, it is imperative on the part of the manager to continuously give the feedback and guide the employee. The second important responsibility of the manager is provide adequate support. Support in terms of the resources. So, if there is resource crunch, who else would the employee come to? The employee is going to share with the manager. So, the ma it is the responsibility of the manager to provide the support of the resources. And also because performance management is a continuous process, it is also the responsibility of the manager to have an accurate observation and keep documenting which in turn would be very helpful when the discussion happens between him and the employee, right. So that was the third phase which talked about performance execution. Coming to the fourth, now execution has been done which we talked about, it is a joint responsibility between the employee and the manager. Now the fourth step talks about, now you assess which is known as performance assessment and appraisal. Now that is the time wherein you are actually assessing or evaluating. Now again there might be a lot of questions which may come in our mind, who should do the assessment, how frequently should it be done. So the details, who should appraise, of course there are a lot of people to be involved without any doubt, your supervisor, your boss needs to be involved. It would add more validity if you are yourself also a part of it which is known as self appraisal. And why just leave till there, 
your peers can also be a party to it, your subordinates can also be a party to it. Anybody who with whom the employee come gets in touch, who are the stakeholders can be a party to provide an assessment. So, the details about the methods of assessment will be talked about in my third module, wherein we also talk about 360 degree feedback, which is becoming very common these days. So, again to reiterate, the fourth step in the process of management is performance assessment and appraisal, wherein a feedback or the appraisal is being done by various stakeholders. Okay. Now, I have got a feedback about or the feedback on the performance of an employee has been received in during the performance assessment and appraisal process. What next? The next step in the process of performance management is conducting performance review. Now, performance review is also termed as PRD, performance review discussion. Now, this is a discussion which happens between the employee and the manager or appraisee and the appraiser which typically talks about the following things. First, the purpose of the interview is first explained to the employee. Second, the employee then talks about what the employee has accomplished. So, it is discussion on self appraisal. The third thing is, now the manager talks about that what are the ratings which the employee has got, the ratings which we received from the previous step. So, during the performance review discussion, the manager shares the ratings and explains the rationale also. Then, after communicating the ratings, there is a joint working on the developmental plan that this is where the employee did well and these are the areas that the employee needs to work on. Also, during the performance review discussion, there is also a discussion on the rewards. If the employee has done well, they need to be positively reinforced. So, the reward discussion is being done and also during the performance review discussion, if developmental plan has been established, there is a you know jointly you understand that what is the follow up. So, you also set up time for the follow up meeting, which in turn has to be acknowledged by both the employee as well as the manager. Ultimately, the manager would you know uh, do a recap of whatever has been discussed, summarize it and share it with the employee. Now, it is important to also see that everything may not be you know very rosy picture. In fact, during the performance uh, review discussions, there might be a lot of disagreement too. There might be certain things of which the employee may not be fully agreeing to. So, during this phase, there is also an appeal process, right. So, all these are the various steps which are covered under performance review, which is the which is the fifth step in the process of performance management. Now, the review has been done. Now, what has to be done? Now, the sixth and the last step in the process of performance management is performance renewal and recontracting. Now, this is the final stage in the process of performance management on the basis of the insights which has been received. So, you readjust your objectives, goals for the next cycle and therefore, you are planning for the next performance cycle to ensure that whatever changes were being discussed or there were certain aspects which could not be done or certain aspects which were done very well. So, your goals objectives are further redesigned and then that is being followed in the next cycle. So, that is about the entire process of performance management. Just to sum up, in this particular module, we first covered on what do we understand by performance management. Secondly, we highlighted the difference between performance management and performance appraisal, a term which many of us tend to use interchangeably, but we discussed that it is not to be used synonymously. The third, we talked about that how performance management contributes towards the performance of the organization. And finally, we discussed the process of performance management.
right? So thank you so much. That was my first module covering an overview of performance management. Hope you enjoyed the first module. Thank you.